Four. G'day guys. My name's Lockie Paul and this is not the gold dude from TikTok. And this is Big Bad Baz. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my second video ever posted ever. Firstly, I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone that watched my first video. There was so much support on it. I had so many comments, heaps of good ideas, heaps of really, really nice comments. I'm going to be honest, I did not see one bad comment. Like, you guys are awesome. Anyway, enough of that. This is number two episode of Uncle Paulie on YouTube. And today, here we have my FJ45 build, which is called Baz. This is something that you're not meant to be seeing yet. This is gonna give you a little bit of a taste of what's to come. What I do have in store for today's episode, a little bit more of this. Yeah, I didn't actually film this entire build. That's an issue. But it's not all bad because before it was painted, I actually made a YouTube episode with my good pal, Uncle Richo, who also has a channel design and built and it was never posted. So what we're gonna do is a little time travel back to before this was painted and you're gonna be able to see some of the fab work and stuff that I've done and we're gonna compare a lot of the differences between my build and Richo's build. Guys, <laughs> g'day legends, Richard here from Design and Built. We are in the bustling metropolis of Emu today, and we're here to look at some barra swapped 40 series on 80 series chassis. And we've got two of them side by side, and uh, there are some key differences between them. Paulie's starting a YouTube channel, and he thought he'd call in the big guns. Not yeah. really big gun. We obviously have a 40 series here on an 80 series chassis. Now, commonly asked question, why did you go 80 series? You've got coil springs, nice and wide. There's also a lot of parts, accessories, even conversion kits and stuff available for it. So. Some of the other reasoning as well, you could obviously do this to a 40 series chassis, but the chassis would flex like a wet noodle because yeah, it's riveted exactly together, right. it's not welded. It's like 40s, well, 50s technology. Finding a 40 series chassis that's in good enough condition to cut up and weld, it's not a very good place to start. When they came out, these chassis were so much stronger than a 40 series ever was and you would have had to cut and shut all your mounts mm -hmm. and then weld to a riveted chassis, yeah. which there's yeah. some you know, inherent problems in that as well. So there. definitely a good place to start. I mean, patrol is another option. It's yeah. a very similar thing. There's a few things with the patrol <laughs> chassis as well, viewers, I'd like to point out. You always cut and shut them, but on a patrol, the, these mounts are in single shear, which is a big no-no. But an 80 series has um, that dual cross member setup. Where's the patrol? They're just sort of hanging off the side. That's the right. And then you exactly. And then you've got to run a brake yeah. off anyway. So yeah. I'm pretty sure the wall thickness is better on yeah. these chassis I think they're as about well. Three mil. That's right. Yeah. So you pick the best chassis, and then yeah. let's let's run through the engine now. We've probably got the greatest motor to ever come out of Australia, the mighty Ford Barra in this, and I guess it is a great choice. And Paulie, explain why you picked it. At the start, I went for this motor because they were cheap. <laughs> Picked this up for 400 bucks off Facebook Marketplace. And that was uh, probably two or three years ago, so. Yeah. And like another one we were talking about before off camera actually was like a straight six in this bay is so much easier to work on. Yeah. Where there's sort of guys that really like working on our cars. And especially when you're trying to fit this yeah. stuff in as well. So what, what exactly have you done to this barrel? Oil pump gears, valve springs, um, the whole head's been reconditioned, new valves all through it, a few other things. So let's have a look at the hot side now. So you've got a fancy manifold and an aftermarket turbo on yep. there, so run us through them. Um, just a six boost manifold and I've got a 3584 Pulsar turbo. Chosen to go with a small one like me, yep. and why is that? I don't want to have some big lag turbo, I want the car to be very responsive. I live in Emu, I'm not racing people at the lights, you know. I just want the car to be fun to drive and I think having that power down low is what I want. Don't listen to them viewers, bigger is always <laughs> better. I noticed you've gone to town here and used about half of Australia's 32 NB <laughs> supply, so tell us about them. My plan is with these, there's going to be sort of infill panels in here and this tube will all be exposed. Exoskeleton. Yeah, basically. Yeah, really and um, okay. yeah, I mean it's there to protect the car and this will all be braced too through to the coil towers. So yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I think we've got to get to the big elephant in the engine bay, <laughs> the coils. 
Uh, run me through them. So these are a 14 inch King's coilover. Um, they're a 2.5 and I got these through Mike's Shock Shop. We're now looking at the underbody and I noticed you've gone Land Cruiser dips? Yeah, so I have gone Land Cruiser dips. Um, I, as you would have seen, I've also got a Land Cruiser chassis and it is a Land Cruiser, so. I'm not very familiar with Land Cruiser dips, so do they come stock with this bracelet? No, they don't come stock with this. This is actually a PSR kit. As much as I like making my own stuff, I think there's some stuff like a diff brace kit where someone's done all the hard work. Maybe that's 10 hours on the computer for yeah. me to do. And I'm just happy to pay the money because it's, you know, I want to build this thing efficiently. I don't mm, want to just exactly be sitting right. on the computer. At the end of the day, I want to get the car running. <laughs> yeah. Now we're looking at the front of the chassis. Now tell us what you've done to this cost member and the front here. It looks a bit short. I don't think the front of an 80 series yeah, finished there. So this cost member has been carefully picked out and flipped over, which is very common. You would have done the same yep. with yours. And then the chassis, I've cut and lopped it off and mounted these plates and threads and stuff. Yep. Um, I'm going to go to a high mount now, but it's not really going to make it. If anything, it's still going to be better. I don't have the chassis rail on the road, and that's super solid. It's got bracing on the outside, um, which actually runs all the way through to under the cab on both sides, and then these plates inside here. So front looks awfully flexy. Yeah, so I've got a mesh fab industries long arm kit in here. Right. The arms are 300 mil longer than standard. Awesome. It's actually a custom long arm kit to suit a 4080 as such. That's awesome. So yeah. with the barra, with this gearbox only. Poor, <laughs> good angle. Good guys. guys. We are now looking at the inside of your vehicle. Now, the first thing I notice is the floor's quite different. It is quite different. Um, so this is an LCS four pan kit. Basically, I've gone and cut the whole original floor out, which wasn't in such a bad condition, but very easy kit to use it's just spot welded in it's got all the tunnel and everything there ready to go yeah that's it i heard a couple of legends from melbourne design this yeah i, I mean i'm not going to name any names but it looks like a really good kit i wish i'd used something similar on my own um and then we've got a removable trans tunnel mm -hmm. lid here for access yep and you're gonna have i mean yours is a manual which is a big difference from mine yeah um so you're just gonna have your manual shifter there and a transfer case lever. I've got a hole to patch in the roof where there's the original spotlight. Oh great! Yeah, the, <laughs> or I might the, just put. Are put, they the roof? The yeah, roof spots. Yeah, I yeah. might just put one back in there. And, well, yeah, I mean, it'd be yeah, pretty yeah, cool shooting rig. <laughs> and I assume like you're running a, like probably a Haltech. Yeah, so I'll be running a Haltech um, lorry LCS. He's got a what's it? What, what you would know? Like what's a, it made adapter, of? Adapter, adapter like plate. A, it's like it's an like ABS. A, yeah, yeah, ABS plastic adapter plate which goes on here and accepts the Haltech. Yeah, cool man. And then like. This seat, is this the finished seat for Baz? Um, not necessarily, I haven't really looked into what oh, else. It's just I got can, a cool seat yeah. cover on it. Just a cool seat cover, but yeah, XR6 seats is what I've got there. Yeah. And they're Razorback custom seat covers they've made for me. It's actually sitting on a couple of bits of wood and a bit of steel there. Like, so you managed to get a block of timber that high? Like, yeah. you've just been I've just, I've had looking heaps around in, bits the, of in wood the wood in pile. There. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. At first I got in and my head was against the roof and then I took, I was smaller and then I'm like, the clutch is going to suck here because there's not a lot of leg room in these. I just haven't got around to the next step, which is to measure everything up and make some mounts for it to go into. No need to measure, just tech screw straight in that. Just tech screw. I'm taking some yeah. big lessons home to Melbourne. Um, from Emu. Today. That's exactly so, right. Thank yeah, you, mate. Improvise, adapt. That's I awesome. mean, there's plenty of bits of wood to go around. We've got different sizes here. <laughs> We're looking at the back end now, and there is a bit going on. Shocks, they're actually in the front. Okay. Because I've only got the two of them at the moment just to work everything yep. out. Yeah, so I bought them same shocks in here. I've worked out this the same way as the front. Then I've built all this. This here is a little bit extra for his fuel tank. This is out of a DPF model. V8 79, yep. um, late model 130 litre tank. Also another big thing with this car, everything is mounted as low as possible on the chassis basically. For off-road performance, yeah. yeah, keep the COG low as possible. Um, no, the, the rear end looks cool. Obviously this is Australia's other half of 32 MB supply. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, a bit, there's a bit in it, but it's gonna be strong as <laughs> Are we swearing on the channel? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. um, and then these are laser cut brackets, CAD drawn for the yep. shock mounts. Yep. Coilover uh, mounts. Coilover mounts, same with the diff. Um, diff bracing on this rear end. I actually done that myself. Yep. I couldn't buy 
something that was going to work for the four link. I actually couldn't buy a four link either. There might be something around at that point. I know there's a couple of kits coming out now, but at the point where I was designing this a couple of years ago, there was no, like no one really had it for an 80 series. Not not this kind of setup. Otherwise, I would have just bought it. So yeah. so yeah, run us through. Like it's actually quite impressive to do your own four link. There's a bit of math involved. There is, um, and you've got adjustability built into the system. Run us through, like how did you do it? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can do it and this isn't necessarily the right way. This setup here measured the chassis, took photos of it, took reference points, widths, everything, drew it into CAD and then from there I worked out what kind of length of arms, what kind of angles everything had to be at, my separation on the diff, separation on the chassis, drew everything into the numbers where I wanted it, seen how it lined up, <coughs> some things didn't work, like where I had my upper arms to where I have my lower arms with that separation, the chassis was like here or whatever. So you have to you have to move things to make it work sometimes. And I'm also not an expert on it. Probably watched enough stuff to kind of have rough understanding of how everything works. Once I was happy, I had the arms sort of floating here in CAD. Then I just drew the mounts around them, laser cut them out, tacked it all together, tacked it all on, bolted everything in and it was perfect. All just fitted. That's the first go. Yeah. And yeah, cycled it through the hoist, checked all the angles and stuff, and it was, yeah, exactly the same as CAD. A lot of hours on CAD. Yeah. Not many hours in the shed to do it. A few though. Big undertaking. And, and like, I guess for the viewers out there, it's pretty funny, like, you do it and I do it as well, but you just gloss over, yeah, I just designed this, I just designed <laughs> this bracket in yeah. CAD. Like, I don't know if you're out there watching us, like, a bracket like this is hours and hours, like possibly like a whole day. He said he redesigned it like three times possibly. Mm. Like, and then I changed the bush thing, I think, <laughs> yeah. to a different style and I had to remove things and oh, yeah. It's yeah. like everyone thinks like because we can CAD and laser cut and plasma cut, it's all like, oh yeah, you just thought of it and it's like done on the car in an yeah. hour. Yeah. No, no, no. And I love the emu cutouts, <laughs> um, you know, obviously doing, doing emu proud. The, the whole of EMU. Got to just put, yeah, well that's it. I mean, it's probably going to be the, probably going to be the coolest 40 series in EMU. <laughs> Not to like be known or brag or anything, but. The rear end of this car, a bit going on. Custom bar, tell us about it. Um, once again, refab. So this is sort of, sort of like a kit. Um, it comes with instructions and stuff of how to weld it together. So I've actually welded this whole bar together. It comes like all pressed up pieces. You've got these recovery points, tow bar. Main thing is recovery points and a spot for a rear winch. Yep. Um, also the tray mounts uh, from Refab, so same thing. 40 series are becoming harder and harder to find. And I guess finding one without rust is even harder. So tell us about how you got this one. So I just put the feelers out there. A local guy from not too far away sent me a message. He had one just sitting in his shed. It was their like farm sort of car. They used to use it for just driving around shooting or whatever. And then yeah, I went and picked it up and drove it off the trailer, drove it into the shed and backed it on the hoist, and that was it. <laughs> so tell us, I'm, I'm a little older, I'm not from the TikTok generation, <laughs> run me through this, this, the Colonel. I am, my mate Kyle, he lives down the end of the road from me, and he's a professional artist. I know you would have seen the silos around yeah, cool. Central Vic that are painted, he actually painted one of them in Sonata, where I live. So he's a very, very talented guy, so I just dropped it off with him, and I'm just like, I just want the Colonel holding the turbo in your style, do whatever you want. And maybe just write Kentucky Fried Boost on it. <laughs> and yeah, I just picked it up and yeah, it's amazing what he's done. Looks spectacular. Uh, it really does. I, I really enjoy that. Well done. Cool, cool idea and um, the, the artwork is awesome as well. So why, why, the theme of K, like, why the theme of KFC? I was heading to Cape York probably two years ago, and I just, for some reason on my Instagram, I was just like posting up all the zinger boxes I got, yeah. and I was keeping a tally of them. And from then on, I've just been the KFC, got like a cis bear, everyone thought it was funny, so I just kept doing it. I don't know if we have talked about it before, but the engine color looks sick, and even just like the these little um, bolts here holding it down, mm, the so petrol colors. So this color here is a Ford Breeze. Yep, Falcon. Yeah, Breeze, Ford yeah. Falcon Breeze. Yeah, so one of the great colours. One of the great colours. One of the great cars. <laughs> you know, the main thing is that it pays homage to one of the greatest cars ever made in Australia, the Falcon. So well done, Paulie. Good job, good choice of colour. Falcon Breeze. That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, so I've got a, a 40 series on an 80 series chassis, like Tooley. I guess this is primarily built as a like a tough tourer. What I'm interested in is really like hard remote tracks. Mm. I think around town, like the hard wheeling around town, um, not as much. Like I'm probably less likely to go out for a day wheel. Well, you've got a high mount winch on the front, so <laughs> you are half prepared. I'm prepared, um, but I really like, I really love the adventure. Like yeah. that's what I'm in it for. If we have to get like, you know, go a thousand Ks up like a really mm. hard rocky track, like great. That's what this is yeah. for. Um, it's sort of like a t yeah, tough tour up as such. Yeah. So um, yeah, 80 series, it's got a 4580 Barrett in it, GU divs, GU box, 79 series transfer case, um, a lot of custom fab, a lot of it's laser cut, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of it's cut, design, a lot of it's designed design and, and built. <laughs> This motor, is this, tell us, is this like a standard? No, it's obviously a red top. Yeah, red top, so this is an FG turbo motor and I bought it from a wrecker as like a front cut, Just basically. pulled straight out of the car, so pulled. everything's there. Yeah, that's yep. right. I've left it pretty much stock, oil pump gears, valve springs, um, bigger injectors, Raceworks fuel rail, Raceworks injectors, and it's pushing 300 kilowatts at the hub, yep. 600 newton meters yep. through an auto. Um, and in, in a car that's probably, have you weighed this, do you know? Yeah, it w without the canopy, it was like yeah. 2400. Yeah. So same thing as Pauly, I've opted for a small turbo for responsiveness and a log style manifold as well. Um, I'm not there to chase numbers at all, I just want it to be drivable. At the front, we've got the LCS high mount 4580 bar now we do these at 40 series as well and then an old banger it's a worn eight what are you lcs what oh oh me and laurie work oh, together oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> but, well, uh, we, haven't, we haven't said that yet have we <laughs> nah yeah so uh, yeah we laurie and i work together on on these sort of products obviously you've got the patrol dish there yeah what was the theory what's your theory behind that obviously stronger stronger <laughs> no stronger. no no brainer yeah. Um, I guess I don't have a fleet of Land Cruisers yeah. like, like yeah. Uh, yourself at EMU. Yeah. My tube guards are a little bit different to yours. These are the LCS style. So these are 32 MB tube guards, LCS style. And we mount them to the top of the frame here. There's three mounting points, one at the rear, and then one to the radiator brace, which you already pointed out. I've got a two mil aluminum skin on them, and then I've just drilled a tap hole. I really like this interior light. What do you got going on here? Yeah, a little bit of strip lighting. Uh, really sets the mood, doesn't it? <laughs> that's right. I don't think that quite came stock from factory. Not sure. Similar floor pan kit to yours. It was like the V1. Yeah. Um, which we did the development. So you kind of designed the kit in this car. That's and right. You sell it. That's right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Done it a few is, more tweaks. Like honestly, it's very, very nice in here. You've got like every inch of it is you've done something. <laughs> yeah, it's very like cut and shard, and I just so like we were talking about before. Do it once, do it right. Mm. I like um, this as well. This is a custom dash, is it? Because you've got an actual dash to sit things on there. Yeah. So I've I've brought out the dash 65 mil, yep. and I've added a shelf. And then I've had to like shorten the fascia of it as well, like through here, yeah, okay. just to get it all to work with the angles. Because I switched to the newer doors yep. as well. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah. So they've got that angle on them. And then, yeah, so I've doubled in all my rocker switches across. AC behind that. That was a really big one for me because I go touring, like, and if I'm going up to Cape York and, and whatever, I just need the AC. Yeah. I just melt like a. Yeah, Haltech. Uh, and are you running, obviously, you've got a Haltech screen here. Are you running yep. a Haltech ECU or are you. No, just so. all, all stock Ford computer. Yep. Like, not chasing big numbers or anything. It's probably about it. Like, custom. So, I've got a custom seat frame, trimmed in vinyl, headliner. You've got these. Door cards. Yeah. These are pretty cool. Custom door cards. Where are they from? Uh, LCS. Oh, I would read about it. Another one. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't happen to be you, would it? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Custom roof console, which are also available at lcs4x4.com.au. Probably one of my big regrets with the cab, I was talking about it before, I wouldn't have minded just like another 50 or 100 A mil. lot of work though. Yeah. I suppose that there's a lot of work in building this car. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, what's another, what's another <laughs> few weekends on it? I, I thought about it, but I was, yeah, yeah no, nah, too much work. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that, that's probably about it. I'm very happy with the interior and it's, it is comfortable. It's got a heap of sound deadener in it. And I, yeah, I've been, I've put the, like 27,000 Ks on it in eight months and it's yeah. a comfy spot and to be. Yeah, that's yeah. Saying, so that's properly tested. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah, that's it. Looks a little bit wild under here. There's a lot going on. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on underneath the back of the car. So, suspension, what diff? You've got obviously patrol diff. Um, fuel tanks, what have you got? Yeah, so I, I tigged up the fuel tanks myself. So, they're two 100 litres uh, fuel tanks of, made out of 3 mil alley with baffles. Yep. So, my design. Um, and I learned to TIG alley on them, really. Like, I yeah. sort of... I, you so you're a little to... bit like me. Like, yeah. you just find, you come to a project where you don't know how to do it, and you just, that's your learning. Yeah. Thing. A lot of, and I mean, a lot of the things I do, I'll do that just to learn. I'll be yeah. like, I'll make it out alley, because I've always wanted to try that. Exactly. So it's, I've essentially got two main tanks. It's a full custom fuel system, two low pressure pumps, one each tank into a surge tank, and then a high pressure pump to the rail. You've got like a button you can switch between the two on, exactly. from in the cab. Yeah. Yep. I've got a trans cooler under the tray. I've also got an oil cooler under the cab yep. as well, just to package it all. And then I've got a custom rear drawer, which is for all my spares. Four. That was supposed to be a bit smoother than that, wasn't it? Wanna do it again? Yeah, no, you can put that in the video. <laughs> all right. <laughs> right oh, what have you got going on here? This is like a whole, this is like a house in here. Yeah, that's right. So one of my big things with a canopy is I'm on holidays. I just don't have time to set up and, and pack up. So I wanted to make it like you, max You want to be able to live out of it. Yep. And you want it to be easy and simple. That's right. right. You're exactly like me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the canopy I built with a fella in Shepparton who's had experience building canopies. So it's, yep. it's, it's um, custom profile to my tray headboard. And I see you've used the T-slot the extrusion uni strut. Yep. For most of your bracing and stuff. It's yeah. so good. Like, yeah, because... I've just, in my canopy designs, so yeah. I've just taken it on because it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And like, you know, you don't have to custom drill nut certs and stuff down into no. it to bolt all this stuff down. You just. And all... you, you could go and change that again, couldn't exactly. you? Like, you could go, oh, I don't like that there, I want it on the other side. Yeah. And you literally could just unbolt it and exactly. swap it around. That's right. So I've got, so a pantry on this side. Just yes. pull out the pantry. Oh, got a bit of baked beans in there, <laughs> a bit of John West. No KFC, unfortunately. No zinger boxes in there. And one of my big things was I wanted to be cooking like really quickly. Mm. I hate getting to camp and like setting up a gas cooker and blah, blah, blah. And so I wanted this just to be pull out and I've got cable snakes running underneath it because I hate yep. plugging stuff yeah. in. Yeah, oh, they just... like those chain, plastic chain looking yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, so. Very high tech, I just run a Weber. And I've got this on a double slide as well, which Jeez, slides out. It... But wait, there's more. <laughs> Yeah, these hinge, hinge back, so I've got all my... Is that stainless, is it? Feels it a little bit heavier, that's it nice. Is. Making up a couple of sangers. That's right. You know, your nice clean food grade. Exactly. Yeah, it's like my pull-out kitchen, I guess. And, um, yeah, man, that's, that's it. Alright, so... More of these handles, they're very nice. Yep. And obviously you've got no. So that's where you put your food. That's so obviously the other fridge is just for beers only because I can see that's about the room you'd need. And he's got this little one here where he puts his food. So. That's it. Math checks out. <laughs> so <laughs> this is yeah. That's the beer fridge. This is just the uh, the food. The yeah. food boy. So you just eating cheap, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, and then I've got these two drawers. So one of them just like the regular drawer at the back here for tools. Yep. Um, got my King Chrome tools in there. And uh, and then this one here. This is really cool. I like this. So this is obviously got some power stuff going on. This looks like you put, this is like a charging drawer, is it? That's right. Yep. So a lot of the time when we're out on the road, we film for YouTube and it's a nightmare to like charge all oh, your batteries. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. And you've got cords and stuff. Like yep. I know I emptied out my glove box and my center console in the gold ute and I've got like the drone in there and yeah. the camera in there. And, then you've got cords coming out of the dash yeah. and trying to change gears. And... Yeah, I got the big boy, the 3000 watt. I've got two RCDs on it. Um, I've steered, actually, if you want to go through my 12 volt setup in detail, check out my YouTube channel. I don't think we're going to cover a whole lot of it here, but I basically got reasoning why I've picked which component. And um, yeah, it's, it's just too much detail to yeah, go into no, here. We don't have time for that here. Have time. We, yeah, we've got fences to check. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fast um, you've got some water, that's a water pump? Yeah, so this yeah. is a water pump. So this is like a $50 Amazon jobby and it's just plugged into the jerry and it just makes your touring so much easier. Shower, <laughs> yeah, that, I, honestly, I, I do care. I mean, <laughs> yeah. um, Very nice. So yeah, pretty, pretty wrapped with that. And then the 
Piece de resistance. Now, br bring the camera around here a bit because you're going to need a good shot of this because he showed me before. This is the game changer. No, I don't even know what it is. It's just... Oh, that. <laughs> so I've got like a hundred dollar projector that goes on a tripod from, um, from, I don't know, wherever. About yeah. like watching like old episodes of Top Gear, Top Gun Maverick, you yeah. know, just Shawshank Redemption, like some of the great movies. Yeah. Um, and great. it's not every, it's like, like Shrek and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Finding Nemo, I'm sure you <laughs> Like that, that sort of stuff, exactly. Yeah. So no, I've been wrapped with this. It's not something you use every night, but nah. like once oh, every it's, couple it's of nights. It's one of those cool shelf Yeah. It's like, you, you impressed me when you pulled it down. <laughs> oh, I'm back. <laughs> Someone pulled Blake Car in the road. Really hope that you guys enjoyed that video. It's one that I've sort of been saving up. It was actually going to be the opener video for the channel. Finally put it together and I'm glad that I got to show it to all of you. Now the important thing to know that my next episodes are not going to be time travel. It's not going to be storytelling. It is going to be real live me working on the car, putting it on the back of big, of big Frank and not going to give away too many secrets. Once again, massive, massive thanks for all your support on the first video. Everyone on even, even the messages that I received on Instagram and all of the comments in the YouTube section, all of the likes, all the people that have subscribed to my channel to see more, like I really appreciate it and it means a lot to me. So if you just could let me know what you think of this video in the comments, is this as good as the last video? Is it better? Is it just like last time? If you want to see more, make sure you give this one a big thumbs up, leave a comment, please, let me know what you think of the video. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. Can't wait to see you on the next video. Boom, we'll be working on this car.